Good morning, ESM. I am Tanner. Today is December thurs Thursday, December 10th. And alongside me is the only teacher in the building, Mr. Ferris. That's right. We are short-staffed. It's one of our top stories. With other top stories, here's Olivia. A group of advisors from the FDA are expected to recommend the agency authorize emergency use of the Pfizer vaccine by the end of, of today after a meeting to discuss safety and effectiveness. The Vaccines and Related Biological Products Advisory Committee, composed of scientists and public health officials, are going to determine whether or not to grant authorization. All indications point to a vote in favor of the vaccine after documents published Tuesday showed the two-dose regimen was 95% effective. A giant experimental rocket was launched by SpaceX last night and successfully flew eight miles into the air before coming down as planned and crashing to the ground in an explosion of flames and smoke. The 160-foot-tall spaceship a prototype model of the Starship is a ship proposed by Elon Musk to haul satellites into space, shuttle people between cities, and eventually bring people to Mars. The prototype successfully maneuvered back to its market, marked landing target, but an issue with the rocket's fuel system caused the crash landing. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. all right, everybody, we're going to try, we have one announcement today. It's about Spirit Week next week. Uh, on Monday, for those students that are in person, we're going to do a holiday winter hat day. Um, and we're going to repeat that for the Thursday group as well. Um, so stay warm and cozy and show off your best hat. And on Friday, ugly sweater day, well, sorry, Tuesday, Friday, ugly sweater day, dress to impress or, or not, have fun either way. So we're trying to bring um, a little holiday spirit week to the high school. As we all know, if you followed Syracuse football this year, it's been more than disappointing. It's been like watching paint dry. The football team is 1 in 10 this year, and that's not even the worst part. The defense has been amazing but the offense looks like they're deer in headlights. Um, Syracuse could have been 2-8 going into, the, going into their game against a second-rate team in the nation, but Rex Culper, Culpepper almost made his way onto SportsCenter, not top 10 plays of the week after he spiked the ball on fourth and goal. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's not going to forget that the rest of his life. Uh, and most Syracuse fans wish that it was uh, still 2018, when SU went to 10-3 and three and won the Camping World Bowl. So what are your thoughts? Do you think uh, Dino the, is going to stick around? I know the athletic director said his job is not in jeopardy. Yeah, that's what I've been hearing. It depends. He hasn't had a season like this since he's come here, but I guess at the end of the day, the fans want to be happy, and if they want Dino's release, then so be it. Well, last time that the, the fans called for a new head coach, uh, Greg Robinson replaced him. So that was Paul Pascaloni. Now, those of you who are questioning, Dino Babers did a great job when he came here. He has never stayed as a head coach at a, a school for more than two years. So he's never had to coach most of his recruits. And right now, it's showing on that offensive side, especially with the quarterback play. So. And the issue is there's no offensive line to protect the quarterback, and that's the downfall of this team. Good thing, by the way, that the SU football team plays inside because the weather outside is not very good. If they're still no. playing games, no, no, it'd be no, no, awful. No. With more, uh, here's our weather with Emily from home. Good morning everyone. Today looks to be a very nice day with a high of 41 with some sun and clouds. Friday will also be the same but warm up to 47. If you were looking to go outside at all this week, I definitely recommend going out today and tomorrow because Saturday and Sunday we'll have some rain showers and the earth will start to cool down and we'll get some snow on Monday and Tuesday. I'm Emily with your weather. Now, 
now is we talk about Syracuse men's basketball. Last year they went 8-14 and 14 after beating North Carolina Tar Heels, Tar Heels to end their season. Through four games this year, the men's team is 3-1 and one after losing to the 21st ranked team in the nation, Rutgers, on Tuesday night. That game was one of eight games that the Orange had against a ranked opponent this year. But this year has already had its ups and downs after the team had a COVID outbreak before the start of the year. And an hour before the game against Niagara, someone on the team had tested positive. And star Buddy player Buddy Baham was out for three games as he was deemed too close of a contact. Um, by the way, they're wearing bracelets that track where they are yeah. at all times. I had a conversation with Adrian Autry. He said they monitor that all the time because they want to know where the players are. Yes. So Buddy was not there for that Rutgers game, so that's going to happen a lot this year, a lot yeah. of college basketball teams. But so far, fans are looking forward to having an amazing year after seeing that Illinois transfer Alan Griffin has so far taken the place of Elijah Hughes after he has declared for the NBA draft. And one thing about the uh, men's team, um, I would count them as national champions, right? If you win the last game of the season, nah. you're national champs. They were the last game played before the COVID outbreak. So that is champs. true. Now, in a surprising uh, story about Syracuse basketball, we're going to send it over to Isabel, who does not even watch SU basketball. That's what I was surprised. That's I'm disappointing. Blown, blown away. <laughs> Syracuse men's basketball was bested at Rutgers ACC Big Ten Challenge on Tuesday with the final score being 69-79. Tonight there will be a women's basketball game at 8 p.m. at Coral Gables, Florida. Tonight the New England Patriots will head to California to take on the Los Angeles Rams in a rematch of Super Bowl 53. The Patriots have struggled this year but are still trying to make a playoff push while the Rams are at the top of their division. I'm Isabel with your sports. But the team that has been on the verge of greatness ever since their 2016 National Championship of Paris, the Syracuse women's basketball team is taking that climb after coach Quentin Hillsman is getting one of the top recruiting classes in the country in the next few years. The women are ranked 20th in the nation at the moment and is 3-0 on the season. After beating breast cancer, star point guard Tiana Monacahio is back and has not waited to be a factor after already scoring 38 points in three games. But also returning guard from last year, Kara Lewis is tearing it up as well with 38 points. And so far this year, the women are one of two teams um, that were ranked preseason mm -hmm. in the top 25. I'll tell you this, um, they're an exciting group to watch. They have a huge recruiting class yes. coming next year. They have a lot of size and a lot of depth, definitely. Yes. And Tiana is amazing distributing the ball. She's one yes. of the best point guards in the country. And I say that men or women, she's one of the best. She's one of the first point guards uh, supposedly being selected in the draft right now going to Seattle joining Brianna Stewart and here's you want a little tidbit about Quentin Hillsman our only girl that I believe from this school that's gone division one basketball was uh, Sharon Burgess and she was uh, recruited by Quentin Hillsman to go play at Siena College when he was getting his start there so from everybody here at the morning show go ahead you say it have a great day. Um.